you can imagine that, uh, again, you're in your kitchen and your glorious offspring or progeny, the fruit of your loins, comes back into the kitchen and says, mummy, mummy, or it may be daddy, daddy, I'm going out with, as it may be, Johnny or Cassie. And you think, oh, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> They're of that age when dating starts. Gosh, they've reached there awfully quickly. <laughs> um, and yes, I guess my world is never going to be quite the same from now on because now there's going to be a, an additional uh, series of people, hazards, <laughs> in my life. Uh, I'm going to have to give uh, talks about certain forms of protective behavior, et cetera, et cetera. There are a whole lot of things that I'm going to have to start coping with, but basically I'm just feeling old. <laughs> in other words, there's a piece of communication it communicated something that was real. It's not completely out of the ordinary. It's within the realm of the expected, if you like. Um, but yes, it does produce a slight shift in my relationship to them and to everyone else. It makes me aware that I'm now more of a grown-up than I thought I was. It makes me aware that they're growing up faster than I had thought. And it reminds me of various forms of responsibility that I'm going to have to take, and so on and so forth. So it's an act of communication with consequence, if you like. So we might say there's a certain sense that that's a, there's some, something of revelation in that. Okay, well then let's now imagine a third form of, of interaction of this sort, a third form of communication. This time, little Johnny or little Cassie comes home. Little Cassie comes home and says, Mommy, 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 I'm pregnant. Or little Johnny comes home and says, Mommy, Mommy, I'm gay. You think, oh, actually here's a, this is an act of communication of a slightly bigger sort. This really does throw the whole network of relationships. It's not something that was expected. It's not part of the ordinary run of things. It throws you for a curveball, as I say. And it means that because of something that is not of your doing, your set of relationships are going to be altered. Your way of relating to a whole lot of other people is going to be shifted. You're going to undergo a change as part of this act of communication. In fact, this act of communication is the beginnings <laughs> of your undergoing a change in relating to that person and in relating to your other relative siblings who will react. And, oh, how could you let her get pregnant so young? Oh, you must be such a bad parent, or whatever. Or, oh, what did you do to make your child gay? You know, all of that kind of stuff. You can imagine dealing with, dealing with the relatives is never going to be a, an easy matter on, 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 on all these kinds of things. But in other words, an act of communication has taken place which has altered your way of relating with other people. It was not something of which you had any control. You have undergone a change as a result of an act of communication. That's the sense in which it's a revelation. Well, the only point I really wanted to make uh, to you with relation to this is that when we talk about revelation in the theological sense. It's of this latter sort that we're talking about. We're not talking about God imparting information. <laughs> that would fit in with the uh, theory that you're supposed to know and hold on to, facts you're supposed to know about God. What we're talking about is an interruption, if you like, into your normal social circumstance, an eruption that interrupts someone communicating something to you that is therefore radically going to alter your perception of who they are and who you are <laughs> and is going to alter all your relationships. Does that, does that make sense? You begin to see a sense of why that might be uh, a sense of revelation with which we can relate, to which we relate at the anthropological sense, but it's not the same thing at all as uh, a communication of information or letting you know a fact. It's much, much more than letting you know a fact. And linked to that is the sense in which any revelation has a flip side. The flip side is a process of discovery. <laughs> what your child was doing when they told you they were pregnant or, or they were gay was revealing something to you. What you were doing was discovering something. <laughs> Without a process of discovery, there hasn't been a revelation. <laughs> what the anthropological concavity, if you like, 
which a revelation produces is, we call it discovery. It's the same, it's the same uh, as you would say, where nothing has been learnt, there nothing has been taught. <laughs> if a teacher goes blah, 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 indefinitely, and that there is no sign that the people they have supposedly been teaching have undergone a process of learning, you would say, nothing has been taught. And the teacher would say, but I've been teaching them for months. <laughs> we would say, well, unfortunately, it's a failed act of teaching. Uh, because there has not been learning. Where there has been teaching, there has been learning. OK, where there has been revelation, there has been discovery. So whenever we talk about divine revelation, what we'll be looking at is the shape of the concavity, <laughs> the process of discovery, what it is about being human and how we relate to each other that we have undergone. You see what I mean? Uh, in the same way as we could look at the knock-on result of little Johnny or little Cassie having given this, dropped this time bomb <laughs> in the parental lap. Um, <laughs> We could look at the knock-on effect of that in terms of the concavity which that produces in the social relationships. That would be the process of discovery by which the in-laws and everyone else <laughs> works out what they're going to do. Uh, do. Do you see what I mean? Okay, so that's the kind of thing that we're looking at. But please remember, the anthropological co correlate, as I think it is the term, to revelation is discovery in exactly the same way as the anthropological correlate to teaching is learning. <laughs> if there hasn't been the latter, there hasn't been the former. Does that, does, does that make sense? Good. I just wanted to bring that up because when we, if you remember, we started by talking about this strange act of communication. It makes no sense at all to talk about a strange act of communication excepted as far as we who have been communicated with find ourselves undergoing a process of being communicated to. <laughs> It's, it's that that quite we're going to be looking at. It's often much easier to pick up the concavity than it is to pick up the act of communication. Does that make sense? So that's what we're going to be uh, looking at over the next few sessions.